Hi everybody, just want to throw a quick video together to kind of wrap up this little platformer series that I've done and clean up just a couple tiny rough edges and point you to some resources that I have to, to take your game to the next level. And so what we'll look at here is cleaning up our code on our player state machine just ever so slightly. We will look at a way to adjust our player's gravity when he's on a slope so he doesn't slide. And then we'll talk about our tile maps, look at the tile sheet, and talk about how you can get background and other things set up for your game. Hey, Michael here. Throw on your favorite game dev tunes and join me as we build a 2D platformer in Godot 4 using GD Script. All right, so the first thing I want to look at is if you recall back in our player, let's go ahead and open up our player scene and this player state machine. We had this, or I had this issue um, that I didn't encounter when I was making the game where I ended up doing this weird change state code here, right? I'm gonna go ahead and delete this. Um, this was kind of necessary because if we were in the idle state when we started and it didn't have any way to leave the state, we just kind of got stuck. I'm gonna go ahead and just uncomment this one, li one line here to change to the current state and just run the game. And we should see that it's, it's gonna work fine because now that we have conditions for the player to be able to enter the fall state um, from idle, then it just works fine. And so now this code is good to go. So I posted this tutorial series on the Godot um, forum, and I had a comment that where someone stated that you could simply just maybe enter the state. And I think that was a brilliant suggestion. So just to avoid any potential issues, you could say um, current state dot enter right here. That way we know we will begin that state. And that was like such an obvious and simple solution. I don't know why I overlooked it. So thank you for that. And I think the person removed their comment because I can no longer find it. So I can't credit who it was, but thank you regardless. So there we go. That's one little fix that we can introduce to the game, right? Um, there's a few other things I'd like to look at. You know, we've got some print statements throughout our code, and those are really unnecessary once we know it's working how we intended, and they can kind of bloat and, you know, kind of clutter up our output console. We don't really want that. So I just like to go through here. I'm going to do a control shift F and find anything that, begins with print and let's see let's go ahead and just do a find okay here we go we've got one here uh another thing in our player state machine like we're just printing that we're already in the current state don't need to do that printing our states here looks like we've cleaned up most of them except for a couple here in within our state machine so then the next the last one um do i not see it did i already remove it Looks like it looks like we did. OK, so I'm just going to go ahead and save that change. Refresh that search. OK, we're all good there. And then we can go through and just check our code, make sure it's clean. Um, likely, you may want to add some comments so you understand what some of the code is doing. And I haven't done that. That's a habit I need to maybe get into more. I don't I don't comment my code very much. Um, but that's always something that's good and worth doing. OK, so just a little bit of cleanup there on our code. Now, the next thing I want to look at is something that is kind of optional, okay? Because you may you may not want to do this, but let me go ahead and run the game and show you what I'm talking about. There's an issue when we're on slopes where the player can kind of like slide down the hill. And you may actually want this, right? This may be a desired functionality, but it isn't always great and it can cause some issues. And, and we already did a little bit of work on our player on a rigid body 2D with some of these settings, you know, making it so that we adjusted the angle at which he could run on the walls and things like that. But there's a pretty simple thing that we can implement here. And I actually like to do this because otherwise you can run into some weird situations. And I'm just going to go to the physics process. So here in our player script, in our physics process, we're just increasing the Y velocity based on the gravity. But one thing that we can do in here is we can just put this in an if check. We can say if uh, is on floor equals true, right? So if we're on the floor, um, actually, we want to say if this is false, <laughs> not true. If we're not on the floor, then we should be increasing our gravity. Otherwise, let's just leave it alone. And if we run the game, you can see that it still it still works. I can still run and jump and, you know, fall off the edge and whatnot. But when I'm on this slope, it'll just stop. So if you want to be able to prevent the player from, you know, slowly sliding down hills that's one quick fix now it might have some other implications for your game and your code later on but i think for most general platformers that's a pretty safe way to handle things because again 
all of our other code continues to work. We still add gravity when we're not on the floor. Now, I want to look at a couple tile sheet related things, um, answer a question, and then maybe talk about how we can flesh out the scene a little bit more. But um, someone had commented on one of my videos, let's see, I guess on video seven about the one-way platforms, that uh, why are there so many duplicate tiles on the tile sheet? And let's go ahead and open this up. I think it's a little bit misleading. So if I if I get this tile sheet and tile set selected, so I think they're looking at this thinking, these tiles are just repeated, right? But in reality, they aren't. Because if you look, like for example, these ones with the circles, the one that I'm hovering right now, it will only display when there needs to be a corner on the top left, top right, and bottom right, okay? And then like this one's top left, top right, and bottom left, okay? Each of these tiles, while they may look like they're repeat in some cases, they're not. Like this is the only tile that is like sand on all sides, has no grass. That's the only one you'll find in this whole tile set. It would look like you might find that elsewhere, but in reality, when you kind of select the, oh, never mind, there's two. <laughs> Maybe I lied about that one, right? But generally, all these other tiles have a very unique use case, okay? Here's one with only on the bottom, bottom and top right, bottom and top left, bottom right corner, bottom right corner with top left corner. You, you know, all these things are actually quite unique, okay? And so it's just kind of a weird, this is a weird tile set, and um, it's designed for this specific purpose for the idle tiling, you know, so that you can quickly just work on this. So if I'm in a sprite and I'm drawing on this, I can just replace all the edges on these, update it and save it and, and export it and away we go. Okay. The other thing I want to talk about with tile maps, and that is just making our game look a little bit nicer. One thing that I didn't do in this series is get into really the aesthetics of the level. We obviously created a pretty functional tile set that we can use. But one thing that we can do, and I'm going to go ahead and add a parallax 2D layer. And actually, wait, which one do I want? Parallax 2D or parallax layer? Let's see here. Okay, so the par yeah, parallax 2D is the new version. Parallax layer works with um, an, older, an older parallax system. If you look at it here, it says you need the parallax background. So I'm just going to grab this parallax 2D layer. And what a parallax 2D layer allows us to do is to have things that move across the screen at a different rate than the others, which can give the effect of depth, right? And I'm going to go ahead and just drop into this. I'm going to just add, let's just add a sprite 2D actually. And I'm going to just make up one. So we don't, I don't have a texture for this. I'm just going to go to create a new gradient 2D texture and just configure this real quick. And this looks funny because of reasons, it's kind of bugged out actually. But um, what I'll do is I wanna create like a sky, right? So let me just pick a blue, kind of a blue color for the top of the horizon or the top of the sky and one for at the horizon, a lighter colored blue. Okay, maybe a little bit tint of green in there. So I've got this gradient and you can see now it's filling in this box here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and maybe adjust the size of this to be larger, 512 by 256 maybe. And I want to adjust how the fill works. Linear is good. And I'm going to go from zero, zero, which is, let's see, should be the top left. And then I want to go instead of to one on the X, I'm going to go to zero on the X and one on the Y. That's going to give me a gradient that goes top to bottom. And now if I just drag this in here, or actually I can, I can drag this whole parallax 2D layer behind my camera if I want to. And let me give this a, uh, and ordering and set this way in the back. So I'm just gonna say like negative 100, okay? So that this sky layer is always in the back. Now on this Parallax 2D, if I run the game right now, it's it's not really gonna be obvious. It's, it's still just there, it's just a box, right? But if we come over here and we adjust this scroll scale to zero and then go back to our game. Oh, well now it's not working, where'd it go? Actually, it probably is, but I placed it behind the camera and not at the origin. So let's go ahead and reset the scroll offset. Okay, and then go back to the game. Here we go. Now, this isn't quite right yet, but you can see that this rectangle is moving with the camera. Because our scroll scale is zero, it means it, that means it's not gonna scroll at all. Let's go ahead and reduce this to like 0.2. Oops, I accidentally changed that. Okay, there we go. So at 0.2, you can see now it's going to move ever so slightly. 
And if we watch, the right edge is getting closer to the right edge of the screen. And as I move towards the right, it's getting further to the left. Okay. So you can use this and stack these to create uh, the illusion of depth. What I want for this sky, though, is for it to be on zero and zero. And then let me just grab this sprite that is a child of the parallax 2D and just drag it kind of like this so that it is kind of positioned at the top left corner. And now when I go back to my game, I have a sky that's not going to move. It's just always going to be there. OK, and then you can create additional parallax 2D layers and add tile map layers as a child of them. So if you want some of these hills in the background to be part of a parallax 2D layer, you can do that. And I'm not going to go in depth into that in this video, but there is a link that you can go to one of my videos where I do cover this parallax 2D layer in more depth and how you can set it up for a level that has multiple layers of background elements that scroll independently of the camera. Now, if you follow that tutorial, you can even figure out how to get some things like these scrolling clouds I have in the background and just flesh out your world and make it look, you know, pretty cool. You can see that I've got the parallaxing effect on some of my background elements here, including the foreground element <laughs> that I've used to create my intro. So thank, thanks for watching, guys. I just wanted to throw this quick video together to address a couple of these minor little issues or questions and maybe point you where you can go next. And I'm going to be on vacation for a week. And then when I get back, I'm going to be straight to work on more content for my action RPG series. So look forward to that. Please subscribe to my channel if you're new and you want to see what's coming out next. Otherwise, give this video a like if you enjoy the content and if you're learning from it. And as always, we'll see you next time.